Hello everyone and welcome to my lecture series on uh, molecular dynamics and first let us revise what we have learned in our previous lecture. So uh, this is where uh, we have stopped our discussion in our previous lecture. So uh, in the end of the previous video uh, we have derived two very important Hamiltonian equation. Okay, what we term as equation 3 and equation 6. So, uh, using these two Hamiltonian equation, uh, by solving those Hamiltonian equation at every time step in your simulation, you would be able to generate a trajectory of atom that will move in your MD simulation. So, this is what you want to do. If this is the time frame of your simulation and this is the small time step of 1 femtosecond. Okay, so what you will need to do is that every time your system move from one time step to next time step, you are supposed to solve this uh, Hamiltonian equation so that uh, you can uh, get an idea as to where your atom is in the next time step. Okay, so uh, in this way, by solving uh, the Hamiltonian equations for the number of time steps in your simulation, you would be able to obtain certain trajectory and analyze how the atoms in your protein will move. So, uh, so that is what we did in our previous lecture. Okay, so in, uh, uh, in today's lecture, what we are going to do is uh, that we are supposed to deal with this new topic called as Taylor series and velocity overlay algorithm so this this is going to be a major topic of discussion today okay so let me introduce as to why do we need these things in our uh, molecular dynamics simulation okay so the hamiltonian equation 3 and 6 that uh, we have derived in our uh, previous lecture uh, well uh, the problem with these two equation is that they don't have an exact solution. I am talking about those Hamiltonian equations. Okay, the problem is that the two equations that we have derived, equation number 3 and 6, they don't have an exact solution. Therefore, uh, these two equations are needed to be solved numerically. And how is that we solve these two equations numerically is the main focus of today's lecture. Okay, so uh, just to begin with, uh, well, let me introduce you or let us assume uh, the potential energy surface of our protein over the given time okay so uh, well uh, let us uh, let us revise back that we can represent our uh, uh, we can represent the time evolution of the protein this is time on x axis and what you can do on y axis you can uh, plot the coordinates or you can say position of atom as well as uh, we have represented them as q and you can also plot velocity on your y axis we would represent it as small v okay so uh, this is what we can do okay and uh, well say for example uh, and this is how your time plot might look like okay so uh, let us say uh, uh, well let me explain you what this potential energy surface is all about this is what we call it as the 
potential energy surface of your protein okay so what we have done in the due course of simulation okay the time on x axis what we can do is that we can plot how the position of atom which is represented by q and velocity of the atoms that are present in your system has changed okay as the protein will move of course the position will change its velocity will change and you can plot the coordinates of the xyz coordinates on uh, on the y axis as well as the velocity at each and every time step on, on the y axis as well okay so uh, this is what uh, this potential energy say, uh, surface say as the system progress in time the position of atom that is the coordinate represented as q and the velocity of the atom will evolve or change right that is what will happen in our md simulation okay of course before we run the simulation we will not have uh, this data as to how the coordinate and position will change right you, you cannot have this data before running the simulation okay but just for the sake of simplicity let us assume that uh, i mean this is how uh, our system has evolved or in other words this is how the trajectory of your system is this is how the position and velocity of the particles in your system has changed okay so let us begin with a simple uh, illustration okay so now i hope you are comfortable with uh, what this graph is all about this is called as the potential energy surface right so now uh, let us assume that uh, we know the coordinate and velocities of our protein system at some time t so this is time on x axis well say for example at time t let us say uh, we know uh, what is the coordinate and uh, what is the velocity of the atoms that are present in our system okay so this is what we know at this particular time step in our simulation we know what is the coordinate that is q of t and we also know what would be the velocity of atoms in our system at this particular time step this particular time step we are talking about okay in the figure above right so uh, now the challenge is my friends that uh, uh, we wish to calculate the coordinate and the velocities of the atom in our system at some different time uh, in our simulation okay we'll say for example at this time right so uh, we know what is the position of atoms at time step t we also know what is the velocity of atoms that are present in your in our system at time t now the challenge is that we wish to calculate what will be the position of the atoms in our system at some different uh, point in our simulation okay so uh, let us call it as t plus delta t okay so what uh, we want to calculate is that what is the uh, coordinate of our system at time t plus delta t after delta t time has passed what will be its coordinate okay as well as we are interested to know what will be the velocity of atoms when the same t plus delta t time has passed delta t would uh, 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 would correspond to some uh, passage of time okay so this is what we are interested in the uh, we are interested in to calculate the coordinate and the velocity of the atoms in a system at the next time step when t plus delta t time has passed okay so now let us we have called it as the position at the uh, position of atoms or the coordinate of atoms at uh, the next time step that is at t plus delta t time okay and the velocity at the next time step t plus delta t okay so now the coordinate and the velocities of atom and this point can be represented by this term okay so uh, so i hope now it is clear as to uh, what we refer uh, when i write a simple t 
and what we refer when I would write t plus delta t. Okay, whenever uh, this t plus delta t would appear in you, in your equation, it would mean that we are referring to next time step. And whenever uh, this only t appears in your equation, that would represent uh, we are uh, referring to the position of atoms as well as velocity of atoms in the current time step. Okay, now the scene is that we know the system information in the form of its coordinate and velocities at time t and we want to calculate the same information in the next time step that is t plus delta t. Okay, so if this is the situation then such problem can be solved using the concept called as Taylor expansion. Okay. So, if, if this is the situation, right, if you have information at certain uh, point in your potential energy surface and what you want to do is to predict as to what would be the uh, position and as well as the velocity or you can say in short what will be the information at some different uh, point in your system, then such a kind of question can be mathematically addressed using this Taylor series of expansion. Okay. Let me Okay. So this is what we were dealing with. Uh, you can use this Taylor series of expansion when you want uh, to, uh, you know, calculate information at unknown point, starting with some point where information is available. Okay. So, what we uh, need to do is to perform this Taylor expansion at, say, some known point to compute the information at, say, some a known point in the potential energy surface that is what we need to do okay so our taylor expansion uh, will be more accurate when this delta t okay so let us correspond this two particular time step okay so our taylor expansion will be very accurate when this delta t time that has passed in your simulation what we call it as time step uh, uh, that separate these two points, well, if these two separating points are very slow, uh, well, uh, your Taylor expansion will give you some accurate result. Okay, so our Taylor expansion will be more accurate when the delta T time that separate the two points is very small. Okay, so smaller is the time step more accurate would be the information that you would be predicting and therefore my friends in order to get more accurate information of coordinate and velocities it is always advised to keep your time step in your simulation to a very small value of say only one femtosecond or say at for example two femtosecond okay so lower is this delta t or time step value Accurate would be the predicted position and velocities of uh, the atoms that are present in your system. Okay, so uh, this is something to be uh, very, you know, uh, meticulously remembered in your uh, Taylor series of expansion and molecular dynamics simulation. Okay, so uh, before we jump out on how do we uh, how do we use this Taylor series of expansion for finding out the new coordinate and velocities of our protein molecule well let us uh, first let me introduce you with the concept of what this Taylor series of expansion is okay so mathematically uh, Taylor uh, expansion is done around say some points okay uh, we would at least need two points around which uh, you would perform your Taylor expansion okay and logically it can be performed over infinite point uh, and uh, you know the expression of the Taylor series 
expansion is I would I would just uh, write down the expression for this Taylor series of expansion. It can be written as f of x is equal to you would start out with n is equal to 0 and go till infinity in a we have got this n prime and you have got x minus a raised to n okay so over here your n prime is the factorial of n where your a is a real complex number and this f of n a well uh, this particular uh, this particular uh, expression uh, well is the nth order derivative of the function x that we are talking about e evaluated at point a okay so this is what we need in order to perform the Taylor series of expansion you would need at least two points okay and uh, this is you know very general expression of the Taylor series of expansion where you have got some factorial of n you have got certain function which we are interested in okay and uh, this one is the nth order derivative of the function at the point a okay so uh, well this is uh, you know a uh, very uh, brief expression so uh, we cannot implement uh, uh, this expression in uh, solving the problem that we are trying to deal with okay so we need to simplify this equation okay so if we simplify this equation you can write the same equation in some different form okay how we can write it uh, you can write it as f of x is equal to f of a plus f prime a x minus a plus f of double prime a divided by 2 prime and then we have got x minus a square plus f triple prime a divided by 3 prime x minus a cube plus dash 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 and this will go for infinity you start with n is equal to 0 and you would begin with infinity so uh, you can call this particular term as the first derivative this as second derivative and this as third derivative and so on okay so collectively we call this term as higher order derivatives okay so uh, this is the form of Taylor series of ex uh, Taylor expansion series that uh, we would be implemented in solving our equation of uh, 
solving our equations to obtain the information at next point in our simulation okay so uh, you know uh, if you well uh, my objective is not to uh, tell you as to how this expression are uh, you know how this expression are uh, derived okay so that is completely out of scope of uh, this uh, discussion okay so if you want to go in more details of as to from where this come maybe you should uh, uh, turn uh, your attention to your mathematics friend or uh, ask any mathematics teacher as to what this taylor series of expansion is my objective over here is to explain you how the taylor series of expansion can be used to address the question that we are dealing with we i would be dealing with the application of taylor series of expansion and not the derivation of this taylor series of expansion okay so don't get afraid if uh, uh, you kind of find it uh, you know out of your scope just hold on to the end of this video you will get comfortable with this concept okay so what this taylor series of expansion has uh, for example you can just say for the sake of simplicity is is that uh, we have got addition of uh, the higher order derivative till infinity okay and we are going to use uh, this taylor series of expansion to address the question as to how can we predict the position of our atoms in our system at a uh, different uh, time point and velocity of the atoms in our system at the next uh, time point as well. so this is what we are going to require and things will get easier when we implement this thing uh in uh, you know uh, in our uh, molecular dynamics uh, simulation okay so uh, this is where you know most of the biologists always complain ki as to uh, they have learn in their mathematics class as to okay what is taylor series of expansion uh, and all the integrals and derivatives right but uh, uh, they always kind of complain ki uh, where do i use it so this is where you Uh, use the calculus that you have learned in your mathematics so hold on to this thing it is going to be fun right so uh, well now we would be using this equation this uh, taylor series of expansion to uh, find out the uh, coordinate as well as velocities the position and the velocities of atoms in our system okay so Uh, well let us move on to the next slide and uh, let us you know now we need to implement this concept of taylor series of expansion uh, uh, to compute the coordinate and velocity at time t plus uh, t plus delta t okay so what we need to perform is the uh, perform is the taylor series of expansion around the point where you know the uh, when you where you know the position and velocities uh, of the atom to find out the position and velocities of atom at some unknown point okay so if we implement this concept in our uh, uh, implement this concept in our uh, molecular dynamics uh, you might end up with writing the equation let us well say start out with implementing the concept of taylor series of expansion to our system okay so uh, here is what we would be dealing with we are interested in finding out the position of our atom at uh, time t plus delta t and after implementing this taylor series of expansion this is how our expression for taylor series of expansion might look like so what we have is the position at time t okay this is the first term 
f of a okay this is the position at time t then uh, we will have this term delta t position at time t by dt that is differentiation of this qt with respect to time then we will have the higher order derivative of uh, the same term delta t square by 2 prime and the next higher order derivative d square qt and dt square then again we have got the third order derivative over here delta t cube by 3 prime and then you have delta cube qt by dt3 and then you have plus 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 and it will go on continuing well let us call it as equation number 7 okay so uh, this is the same uh, concept that we have implemented in our formal description of velocity burlet algorithm okay so over here uh, you uh, you have got the first derivative this is your second derivative and this is your third order derivative first okay and uh, well uh, now uh, let me try to explain as to what is the significance of this equation number 7 let me break down what this equation 7 correspond to okay so in this equation number uh, 7 which correspond to your taylor series of expansion of our molecular dynamics system this term that is delta t position differentiation of position with respect to time well uh, this we call it as the first derivative of coordinates or position with respect to time okay this particular expression delta t square by 2 prime then the second derivative d square qt by dt square well, this expression is the second order derivative of your position. Okay. And this third delta t cube by 3 prime delta cube the position of atoms by dt cube well this is your third order derivative okay so uh, this is first order derivative second order derivative and third order derivative now uh, let us uh, try to bring in some physics in this mathematics that we have uh, derived so far okay so now what will happen we know that this term okay the first derivative of position with respect to time delta t derivative of position with respect to time is nothing but velocity at time t okay right this is what the first derivative of position with respect to time we call it as velocity. So, this term represent the velocity in your Taylor series of expansion. Right. Well, let us write it over here. Since first derivative of coordinate with respect to time is velocity. Right. Now, what about the second derivative? We are talking about this term now. Delta t square by 2 prime. Then, delta square qt 
dt square. This is the second derivative. Okay, so uh, the second derivative is acceleration, right? Since we know, since the second derivative term will uh, correspond to acceleration. Now we also know we can write the same acceleration term in terms of force, force at time t divided by m. Now from where in the hell this came from? Well, uh, because we already know since this equation force is equal to mass into acceleration, we can rewrite it as acceleration is equal to force by mass. right? And hence, we ended up replacing this acceleration in terms of force and mass at time step t. Okay, and again, we also know uh, the force can be expressed in terms of it, uh, in terms of its potential energy gradient. So, uh, if we, uh, you know, force is the negative gradient of uh, your uh, uh, of your potential energy gradient with respect to position with respect to position and this is exactly what we are going to do so what we are going to uh, do is we would uh, we would represent this force in terms of its potential energy so that would be minus m minus 1 upon m into the rate of change of potential energy at time of at time t divided by dq okay Ye, how from where did this come from since we know that force is equal to negative gradient of potential energy with respect to position this is what we have learned in our previous few lectures Okay, so where this negative sign came from? Because it is a negative gradient. Therefore, we have written this negative sign outside our expression. Okay, so now uh, we have this thing. Okay, so what we need to do is that uh, let us replace terms of velocity as well as acceleration or potential energy in equation 7. So what we will do is that uh, we would try to replace whatever we have calculated uh, for these terms. Okay. So, what our equation 7 would look like now? It would be something like this. Position at time step t plus delta t will be position at time t plus position will be delta t vt right okay minus delta t square by 2m so we are replacing this with this and this with this right so this is uh, what we are doing okay and uh, what happened to this prime <laughs> right one would ask uh, this this question what happens to prime means what prime means kind of uh, you would calculate uh, two prime as two prime as two into one three prime as 
3 into 2 into 1 and so on and so forth. So the value of 2 prime is still 2. Therefore, we have got this 2 over here. Okay. So uh, now my friend, let us call it as let us call this equation. This is very very important equation. Let us call it as equation 8. Okay, this is very important equation and we will come back to this in a while. Okay, so now let me explain you as to what exactly uh, uh, we have done when we have derived this equation. Okay, so what do uh, this equation signify? Okay, so this equation 8 you know can uh, correspond to the solution of the first equation of motion okay with this equation that's e this equation number eight we can compute the coordinate of particular time step it it enables you to calculating the uh, coordinate at the next time step if you know the coordinate of the previous time step or you can say the current time step qt the velocity of the current time step that is a change in velocity vt and the energy gradient of the current time step this is the energy gradient the, the term that includes your potential energy this is called as the energy gradient so this is what it means okay i will revise it once more uh, using this equation we can compute the coordinate of a particular time step if we know the coordinate of the previous time step, the velocity of the previous uh, time step and the energy gradient of the previous time step. If we know these three terms, well, uh, you can calculate what the, what will be the position of atoms in your next time step that is uh, at time step t plus delta t. Okay, so in short, congratulations, uh, we have somehow figured out how to calculate the position or coordinate of atom in the protein when the system evolves from time t to delta t. Okay, so uh, let us now think on how do we deal with estimating the velocity of particle around the known point vt in your potential energy system. Okay, so now we have dealt with this question as to uh, after... Uh, pulling out this Taylor series of expansion, we now know as to how the position of my atoms will differ at t plus delta t uh, in comparison to the initial position. But now we still have to deal with this term. How do we calculate the, uh, you know, let us think on how do we deal with estimating the velocity of the particle around the known point vt, how the velocity will change when the uh, when the uh, when the simulation progresses by a single time step okay so uh, well for this purpose uh, of course we will again need to perform the taylor series of expansion but at point uh, vt we would be considering vt uh, velocity instead of the position qt function Okay, so instead of function qt, we would be uh, we would be implementing this Taylor series of expansion with velocity. That is what we are going to do. Okay, so if we write the Taylor series of expansion, taking consideration of the velocity, okay. Uh, taking consideration of velocity here uh, uh, Taylor series of expansion considering the velocity okay which we termed as V uh, equation will uh, look something like this okay so we need to find out what will be the velocity of our system at time t plus delta t okay and of course we have got we, we have to begin with velocity at the current time step right plus its first derivative okay delta t 
we have got dv at time step t by dt okay then we have got its second derivative delta t square 2 prime this is the second order derivative with respect to velocity and then we have got the third order derivative which we represent as delta t cube 3 prime and delta cube velocity at position of t and dt cube and we would go on till adding till it reach infinity let, let us call this equation of Taylor series of expansion concerning the velocity as equation number 9 okay so now uh, we have got a little situation over here okay so uh, well we know that the uh, that the first derivative of velocity is acceleration right? this is the first derivative of velocity okay which we know it is acceleration okay but uh, we well you know this second derivative and uh, the subsequent derivative the second derivative term uh, in your uh, taylor series of expansion is a very complicated mathematical expression and uh, for calculation okay because uh, really we don't know how to simplify the second uh, derivative of velocity with respect to time okay we know that the first derivative of velocity with respect to time is acceleration but what about the second order term in the taylor series of expansion this one okay so uh, we don't know what is the higher order derivative of acceleration right and uh, to deal with this problem we need to do an additional uh, taylor series of expansion but uh, this time we will do it around this uh, velocity uh, around this term right we would we would have to perform uh, this taylor series of expansion around this term dv uh, that is derivative of velocity with respect to time at time step t okay that is around the term for acceleration so uh, why we are doing this uh, we are kind of trying to uh, implement another taylor series of expansion in the previous taylor series of expansion okay uh, we, are, we are trying to build up a, a Taylor expansion inside the first Taylor expansion. That is what we are going to do. right? And uh, why we are doing this? Because we don't know how do we simplify the second order derivative and the subsequent order derivative of, of velocity. Okay. So, uh, now for this, uh, well, let me write it so that it won't get confusing. Okay. to deal with the problem the problem being we don't know what are the higher derivatives of velocity okay to deal with the problem we need to do an additional Taylor series of expansion but this time we will do it around this term the term for velocity the term for velocity is first derivative that is acceleration okay Right? that is around the acceleration term in equation 9 we, we would need to do the taylor series of expansion around this term right so uh, well in order to make it visually more more clear the second uh, taylor series expansion i will 
uh, I will uh, write it using some different color so that it will you know become easier for you to identify which one is the second which are the mathematical expression that came from the uh, second uh, or what we call it as the additional Taylor series of expansion so if we proceed to do the Taylor series of expansion around this point right so here is what uh, uh, we would be dealing with okay it would be like velocity at time t plus delta t by dt is equal to this is where we are going right we are going to deal with what happens with this uh, the, the the Fourier uh, the sorry the uh, Taylor series of expansion around the velocity therefore uh, dv t plus delta t okay so what we have is of course we begin with the same term dv t at time step dt okay then we have got its first order derivative then the second order derivative and let us call it as equation number 10 right uh, so here is what the situation is okay so uh, what we did here is that we calculated the derivative of velocity at time step t plus delta t as a function of first uh, derivative of velocity this one okay and uh, that give us again okay uh, that give us this uh, Taylor series of expansion okay so uh, the thing is that uh, you know we don't need this uh, higher order derivative right we, well, well, we don't really need this order or the third order derivative okay and uh, why is that uh, well uh, for, uh, well say for example uh, we usually limit our uh, Taylor series of expansion at the second order derivative itself okay and why is that uh, we do that uh, the, the thing is that the third order in this expression as well as in our previous expression uh, the uh, when you calculate the third order and higher order derivative the values of such derivative derivative will go on becoming insi insignificant okay and practically we really don't need such extra precision values uh, and therefore uh, the second order derivative are usually sufficient for us for the calculation that we are dealing with okay do also remember uh, that we didn't consider this uh, third order term third derivative term while calculating the uh, you know position at uh, uh, the next time step using the Taylor series of expansion why do we why do we kind of ignore this thing okay we, we didn't use this term why because the uh, you know higher order derivative calculation the values will become smaller and smaller and they would be practically very insignificant and and we don't need that much precision okay so I hope I have cleared my point here okay. why do we why don't we need this th this third derivative in our uh, expressions of uh, Taylor series of expansion okay so uh, we don't need this thing we, we don't need this thing all we need to do is to you would play around with this thing right so this is what we are interested in okay so uh, the final Taylor series expansion for 
this term might look like rate of change of velocity at time t plus delta t with respect to time t would be this equation. Okay, so now this is what we would be dealing with. Okay, we, we don't need that extra precision from equation 10. We would be happy uh, with the values that we get from this expression itself. Okay, so now what we are going to do, well, uh, let us. Uh, multiply the above equation by delta t by 2 on both the sides. Of the equation and uh, what is that we will get if we multiply this equation on both the side by delta t by 2 so we will we all we are doing is we are simplifying this now delta t by 2 is equal to again we have to multiply this delta t by 2 to the first term okay and we would also have to multiply with this term okay so when we multiply by delta t this delta t into delta t will become delta t square by 2 right because there is already one delta t present over here right and we have this uh, d square vt by dt square okay now it is quite clear okay so uh, after multiplying this particular equation on the both side terms by delta t by 2 well, let us call this equation as equation 11 okay so now in this equation 11 uh, we have the situation like uh, we, we all we want to do is that we want to uh, rearrange this equation okay so we have equation like a is equal to b plus c and this same equation we can rearrange it as c is equal to a minus b all we need to do is to uh, isolate this c by bringing the term for b on the other side okay so in this case this is our a this is our b and this is our c all we need to do is that we need to rearrange in terms of this term c okay so let us rearrange equation 11 and rewrite it okay so what do we get when we transfer a on the uh, c on the other side okay what we will get is something like this okay we, we are transferring this on the other side so this will be remaining delta t square by 2 d square vt by dt square okay this 2 is not very clear by dt square 
is equal to this minus this correct what we have delta t by 2 then we have got dv t plus delta t dt minus delta t by 2 delta t by 2 dvt by dt this way right so uh, this is the same equation as equation number 11 okay but after rearrangement we could write it as equation number 12 okay so now when we get equation number 12 we uh, will now replace equation number the value of equation number 12 this particular value into equation number 9 okay right so uh, this is uh, where uh, we uh, we came to we come to you know kind of uh, uh, well wh why do, why do we uh, do this thing because we cannot simplify this term we don't know the higher order derivative uh, after acceleration so by taking another uh, another Taylor series of expansion what we did is that we tried to find out the value simple value for this term the second derivative and this is the same equation as you can see okay so what we will be doing is that we would be uh, kind of uh, we would be kind of replacing the value the simpler value of the second order derivative of velocity with this term that we have calculated in equation number 12 okay so now let us replace equation 12 into equation 9 okay so instead of this term this term you would be writing this term into equation number 9 okay well I think we will need new slide now okay on this slide let us rewrite the equation now we don't need this red color we will begin with the same color okay let me rewrite equation 9 again so that you will keep track of this thing so what was equation 9 the equation 9 was we were find to we were supposed to find out the velocities at time t plus delta t okay and that was we begin with the velocity at the current time step plus the first order derivative delta t d v at time t divided by dt the second order derivative delta t square by 2 prime d square velocity at time t by dt square okay plus the third derivative okay we, we really don't need that right so well, let us only focus till this thing and in our equation 12 this one we have already calculated the value for this thing okay let us put the value for this term that we have calculated in equation number 12 okay right so after substituting values of equation 12 into above equation what we get 
we get something like this okay we, we will have the same equation v t plus delta t that correspond to velocity at time next time step we have the same thing velocity of current time step right we have the first uh, derivative of velocity that is acceleration delta t right this can also be calculated okay and this third term we would calculate we would add from equation number 9 let me write it in the red color so that you will get from where it came from delta t by 2 then we have got minus delta t by 2 let us call it as equation number 30 ok so this is the situation it is ok so what we have is that we, we replace these two term on the right hand side of the same equation in equation number 9 okay and this is what you get right okay so now in this equation number 13 uh, we have got situation like uh, what will happen if we do this 1 minus half or what oh, if you take half out of an entire term, you would still remain with half, right? You have an apple and you ate half of the apple, right? You will have still half of the apple remaining and same is the situation over here, okay? So in this case, this is your full apple and you ate half of the apple over here. So, uh, if you subtract half apple from the full apple, you would still remain half of the apple but with the plus sign. And after doing the same thing, we would rewrite this equation, right? We would, uh, we would, uh, we would subtract this half term from the full term. It is the same term you can see, okay? Okay, you, it is the same term, just it is divided by 2, right? This is uh, this term is the same term as this term but it is divided by 2 or you can see it is multiplied by half that means this is the half term okay so if we remove half term out of the full term we will still have the half term but with the positive sign you have got a positive sign over here right so i hope you get this thing right so if we simplify this thing by you know uh, pulling out the half term what uh, we would end up is something like this t plus delta t is equal to velocity at time t okay plus we are, we are trying to uh, subtract this term from this term so what would remain would be half that is this term but with the plus sign right plus t by 2 right dvt by dt okay this is already there plus delta t by 2 or maybe we will re uh, rewrite with this term so that it would be quite very clear right delta t by 2 dv t plus delta t we would keep this term as it is 
and the half term we would write it over here after this thing right delta t by 2 okay full term minus half term you get the half term that is with the plus sign this is it okay so let us now simplify again this equation okay so now in uh, this equation okay uh, in this equation we have got situation like a b plus a c right a b plus a c you can take this a out of these both term and write it as b plus c right so in this case this this term is your a term this term is your b term right this is your again a term and this is your c term okay a b plus a c what you can do is that you can take this a common and again write this in the bracket b plus c okay so this is what we are going to do now okay so what do we have here okay what do we have is that we have bt plus sin we are taking this delta t by 2 outside the bracket okay and inside the bracket we would be writing this term with this term plus this term Now let us call it as equation 14. Okay, so this term dv t plus delta t is the first uh, derivative of uh, velocity with respect to time at time step t plus delta t. And we know that the first derivative with respect to acceleration uh, is acceleration right the first derivative of velocity at time step t plus delta t with respect to time is acceleration at time t plus delta t okay so this particular term let me rewrite it okay what is this term uh, well maybe we will begin on the or maybe i will continue this term dv t plus delta t divided by dt okay is what is the first derivative of velocity with respect to time at time step t plus delta t right it is the same derivative of velocity with respect to time but at time step t plus delta t okay and we know that first derivative with respect to time is acceleration okay therefore with this equation the acceleration of particle at time t plus delta t can be calculated right
okay and uh, can be written as acceleration at time t plus delta t is equal to you can this is this is the same expression right is equal to force at time t plus delta t divided by m acceleration is nothing but force by mass why because since we know force is equal to mass into acceleration and therefore acceleration is equal to force by mass right so this is the logic through which we came to force and of course we we can again express the force in terms of the potential energy with uh, respect uh, potential energy at time t plus delta t that is what we are going to do next okay and we can write the same expression acceleration at time t plus delta t we can write the same expression in terms of the potential energy right minus m the potential energy at time t plus delta t divided by with respect to you know position why because since we know force is nothing but the negative gradient of potential energy with respect to position right position we have represented in term of q right so uh, here is the potential energy at the uh, time step t plus delta t okay so uh, what we can do is that uh, simply uh, we can write it in the same way this dv t plus delta t by dt is equal to the negative gradient of the potential energy at time step t plus delta t with respect to position well let us call it as equation number a okay so similarly okay dv by t in equation 14 this term okay uh, we uh, similarly this dv by dt in equation 14 correspond to the derivative of velocity with respect to time at time step t that is the acceleration of time step t right therefore uh, we can uh, do the same thing over here for this expression as well right it was for uh, time step t plus delta t and this would be for time step uh, for the current time step and this one was for the next time step right so how will we do this uh, we, we run out of slide right well let me write this Correspond to the derivative of velocity at time t. Okay. That is acceleration at time. Okay, now what we can rewrite it as, therefore, acceleration at time t is nothing but force at time t 
divided by mass okay the 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 same logic since force is equal to mass into acceleration okay and uh, we can also rewrite in terms of its negative gradient of potential energy it is this is the negative gradient of potential energy at time step t with respect to positions okay and therefore this particular term dv by uh, uh, the, the the differentiation of velocity with respect to time t okay by dt is equal to minus 1 upon m in terms of its potential energy rate of change of potential energy with respect to position but let us call it as equation b okay now we what we have done over here is that we have tried to uh, bring this term in terms of the potential energy in your uh, Taylor series of expansion right the potential energy at time step t plus delta t we have calculated it over here and the potential energy at uh, the current time step we have calculated in this equation b okay so now let us rewrite this equation 14 in terms of potential energy and not in terms of acceleration right okay so now what we need to do is that let us substitute the values from equation A and equation B in equation 40 okay so uh, I, I think I might need to rewrite equation 14 so what was the equation 14 so here was the equation 14 we have what velocity at time t plus delta t the velocity at current time step okay this is the Fourier transform equation okay and delta t by 2 in bracket we have got the differentiation of velocity at time t plus delta t with respect to time that is acceleration and the differentiation of velocity at the current time step with respect to time of the current time step this is for the next time step okay so what we need to do is that uh, we have already calculated this uh, this as a and this as b we would add the value of a and b to this equation okay so what we will end up is velocity it has become theta I'm sorry velocity at time t plus delta t by 2 we have got this minus 1 upon m this is in term of the negative gradient of potential energy at time step t plus delta t okay, with respect to position plus we have got this minus sign therefore we will write it in a square bracket 
this term negative gradient of potential energy at time t with respective position okay so now what we will do is that this plus and minus sign would become minus we would again rewrite it as you would, you would remove this bracket minus 1 upon m potential energy at time step t plus delta t by dq plus sorry this would be minus 1 upon m the potential energy at time step t with respect to position okay so we have removed this bracket now next thing what we need to do is that we would take this minus sign outside okay and what our equation will be this this minus sign will go outside therefore what we have is here minus t by 2 and if we take the minus sign outside this 2 will become positive okay 1 upon m dv t plus delta t potential energy with respect to position at time the next time step okay plus 1 upon m the same for potential energy at time step t with respect to the position okay now what we will do we could take this m outside okay this 1 upon m term outside so what we will get minus delta t by 2m we took this m outside and we would end up with dv that is the expression for potential energy at the next time step with respect to the position plus the expression for the potential energy at time step t with respect to the position okay so this is what we finally have okay what we finally have let us rewrite this equation that is the velocity at time step t plus delta t is equal to velocity at current time step right minus delta t by twice its mass dv that is the potential energy at time t plus delta t divided by dq plus potential er energy at the current time step divided by dq okay and my friend let us call it as equation 15 okay so what we have done this equation 15 my friends tells us how to calculate the velocities at time step t plus delta t if we know the velocity of the previous time step okay and the potential energy gradient of current time step and the previous time step as such okay so uh, this is what we have derived okay this equation number 15 is very very important equation 
right so this equation 15 tells us how to calculate the velocity at time time step t plus delta t if you know the velocity of the previous time step okay now my friend this equation number 8 that i have calculated this equation number 8 along with uh, this equation number 15 they together constitute the velocity Verley algorithm okay equation 8 and 15 together constitute the velocity Verley algorithm okay so let me rewrite this equation 8 and 15 for you what was equation number 8 equation number 8 was regarding the position of calculating the position of the atoms in your system at time t plus delta t it was given by the position at time t plus the first derivative of time this is the second derivative of time this was equation number 8 okay and what is equation number 15 t plus velocity at time t plus delta t and how we have written it velocity at time current time step minus delta t by twice m and we have the potential energy term time step t plus delta t by dq plus d potential energy at the current time step divided by dq this is your equation number 15 okay and my friends this is what we were looking out for okay we were trying to simplify this begin at the given position if we know the coordinate and velocity what will be the coordinate and velocity after delta t time has passed and here is how my friends we have calculated these two terms equation number 8 will give you the coordinates or position of your atom in your protein ligand system at time t plus delta t and uh, this equation number 15 will give you the velocity of the atoms that are present in your protein ligand system in time t plus delta t okay so that is what it is equation 8 enables us to find the position coordinate of atoms when system evolves from time step t to delta t okay and equation number 15 will enable us to find the velocity of the atoms in your protein ligand system when the system evolves from time t to delta t okay so using equation 8 we are able to find the new coordinate at the time step t plus delta t if we know the coordinate of the previous time step the velocity of the previous time step and the energy gradient of the previous time step okay using the velocity of the previous time step energy gradient of the previous time step you can calculate the position of the atoms when your uh, system evolves from uh, point a to point b when time delta t has passed okay 
in case of similarly in case of equation number 15 with help of equation number 15 one is able to find the velocity at the next time step that is at time step t plus delta t if we know the velocity of the previous time step this one the energy gradient of the previous time step this one and also the gradient of the current time step okay so uh, if you if you kind of know the energy gradient of the previous time step and the energy gradient of the current time step and the velocity uh, of the previous time step you would be able to calculate the velocity of the next time step okay so uh, well my friends uh, this is how you derive the expression of the velocity overlay algorithm okay and now in our next lecture i would uh, demonstrate you as to how exactly the velocity overlay algorithm is we would begin our discussion with that thing in our next lecture okay so see you guys in the next lecture video Thank you.